Okay, we are recording now. Okay, sir, uh, thank you. Um, this is uh, Commissioner uh, Hood, uh, Chair. I want to welcome uh, all the uh, commissioners and guests to the uh, San Diego Gang uh, Commission. Um, I want to thank uh, some of my uh, our commissioners, especially uh, Commissioner Brown. And I wasn't able to make it to a chair. Thank you, and uh, Pastor uh, Sandoval for all your hard work that's been taking place over the past uh, several months. So um, <clears throat> um, I want to uh, uh, officially uh, give a shout out and welcome and Happy New Year to all the commissioners and guests that are on here. Um, uh, um, there's been a lot happened in the past year, and I, for one, am happy we're in a new year. It's um, very hopeful that it's going to be a better year. So uh, welcome. Um, what I'd like to do is uh, do a roll call. Um, and <clears throat> um, for some reason, I'm not seeing quite everybody. I do see I'm going to start going around the uh, room. And if I miss anybody, if you can just uh, holler up and do a roll call, state your uh, name. And this is mostly for the uh, commissioners. And if the commissioner isn't here and there's a representative, uh, uh, please let us know. So uh, Dana. Uh, Dana Brown, District 7, present. Thank you. Um, I see uh, Commissioner Bustos. You're on uh, mute. Oh, you would think I'd get it by now. Uh, good evening and Happy New Year, everybody. It's Elizabeth Bustos, uh, County of San Diego Health and Human Services Agency. Thank you. And uh, Commissioner uh, Stefan, welcome. Haven't seen you in a while. Nice to see you in your face. Good evening. Summer Stefan, Commissioner present. Looking forward to the meeting. Uh, <clears throat> Commissioner Morial. Good evening, everyone. Mike Morrill here, District 2. Happy New Year. New Year. Uh, we have Beto. Hi, good evening, everyone. Commissioner Vasquez, District 8. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> the commission is that are there that I'm not, I saw, I'm not seeing everybody all at once, so I got to go through. So if there's other commissioners on there that I haven't called, please just speak up. Jamie Wilson's here. Hi, Jamie. Commissioner, hi. Commissioner Thank Wilson, you. District Four. Okay. okay. Any other commissioners? I think I just saw uh, Genevieve Jones just join us. We're doing roll call, so if you can unmute and uh, join the roll call. Hi. Yes, Commissioner Genevieve Jones, right present. Thank you. Okay. And Dr. Hood, this is Andrew Hayden. I'm here tonight on behalf of Commissioner Randy Grossman from the U.S. Attorney's Office. Okay, thank you. Uh, Dr. Hood, I'm Shana Gross on behalf of Peter Kallstrom for the San Diego Workforce Partnership. Thank you. Um, any other guests that are representing uh, uh, commissioners? Good evening, Dr. Hood. Jorge Gonzalez representing uh, Ruben Leyva tonight. Okay, thank you. Anybody representing the uh, sheriff? Hello, yeah, I'm Captain Matt Glisson. Um, I'm uh, in place of uh, Commander Chuck Cinemo, who's representing the, the sheriff tonight. Gotcha. Okay. And, and good about? evening, Lieutenant Mike Ramsey. I'm representing San Diego P. Okay. Is there anybody else, uh, Pastor uh, Sandoval, that would miss? Anybody representing the school, Unified School District? Okay. Um, Community-based organization? 
Arman? No? Okay. Um, <clears throat> Vin Tran, Commissioner Vin Tran uh, excused himself. He had a, he was gonna be out with family, so he's absent. And I haven't heard from Mario Villavolid. And I uh, haven't heard from Mohammed as well. Okay. So those are the others. Um, what I'm gonna do just so we can thank everybody else who is here that may not be uh, commissioners. Uh, I know we have guests um, with the uh, probation and police. If there are guests on uh, representing organizations, uh, could you please introduce yourself? Hello, good evening. Uh, I'm Tyler Linvell. I'm a program manager over at State San Diego. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. Happy New Year. My name is Myra Nunez. I am the director of community relations for Starpel as a guest. Okay, thank you. Hi, good evening. I'm Rich Friedman, uh, captain of the San Diego PD. Thank you. Good evening. Happy New Year. Robert Antiveros. Uh, mentor for community wraparound, a small business owner. Ms. Rodriguez. Good evening, Maritza Rodriguez with the San Diego County Probation Department. Welcome and thank you. Uh, Ron Van, San Diego County Probation, Juvenile Gang Unit. Welcome. Kim Desmond, the Office of Race and Equity. Welcome, Ms. Desmond. Okay. I see uh, Dwayne, is he just being quiet? Dwayne Woodley, uh, District Attorney's Office. Thank you, Dwayne. Okay. Uh, okay. So uh, thank you for that. Um, I'm gonna go ahead, uh, Pastor, and ask uh, the uh, commissioners, and I'm not sure if we actually have a quorum. If not, uh, we can bring the minutes back. So uh, without knowing whether, whether we have a quorum, I know minutes for the uh, September meeting of the gang commission were uh, sent out that I reviewed. I'm gonna ask one of the uh, commissioners if they would make a motion to approve, and then uh, somebody to second. If it turns out, uh, Pastor, we don't have a, a quorum, then we'll have to bring it up again. I believe we're at 10. Let me see. So is there a, a commissioner that wants to uh, make a motion to approve the minutes? I'll make a motion, Dana, uh, District 7. Thank you, Dana. Is there a second? Bethel, Bethel Vasquez, motion, second. Okay, so it's been a uh, motion made by Commissioner Brown, uh, second by Vasquez. Um, and uh, all in favor? Aye. Uh, Aye. Okay. Aye. Let me, let me just ask, are there any, uh, anybody opposed? No, any abstentions? Yes. Yes, I will be abstaining. Genevieve Jones, right? Yeah, Genevieve Jones, right. So for some of the new commissioners, if you weren't there, sometimes it may be appropriate to abstain. So. Also, uh, Commissioner DeAndre Brooks just joined us as well. She's okay. drive careful, brother. <laughs> okay. This is Commissioner Wilson. I wasn't present at the last meeting. I'll be abstaining as well. Okay. Okay. So uh, the minutes have been uh, approved with the uh, noted uh, abstentions. Um, and uh, I think we're going to the uh, agenda area. We'll be talking about a presentation by Commissioner James Kenny Wilson. We're all yours, Jamie. Hi, Tyler, are you ready? Uh, yeah, uh, Pastor Sandoval, would you be able to give me the ability to share my screen? I have a PowerPoint presentation. Uh, 
Yes, you are on as a co-host, so okay. you should be able to share your screen. Okay. Yep. Thank you. All right. All right, is everybody seeing the, the PowerPoint? The right one? Okay. Yep. Well, well, thank you all for, for providing Jamie and myself this time. Uh, just, uh, we're here to talk about Project Rejuvenate. Um, this is a program that the two of us are, are working on um, at Say San Diego. It's also a collaboration with Project Aware um, and also UPAC. I uh, just wanted to give a brief overview of this program. Um, some of you may have heard of it before. And then at the end, you know, happy to answer questions. Uh, I'll, I'll try my best to keep it short, and I'm not sure how much time I have, so feel free, Pastor Sandoval, if I'm taking too long, just let me know, and I'll, I'll wrap it up. Um, but anyway, uh, Pro Project Rejuvenate is a program um, that's funded through the U.S. Department of Justice, through their office, um, OJJDP, the Office of Juvenile Justice and Delinquency Prevention. Um, it's a three-year grant that will be running through September of 2023. Um, with the goals of uh, reducing youth involvement in gangs, also reducing uh, youth gun offenses uh, related to weapons, drugs, and alcohol, and then also increasing um, social, social and emotional well-being uh, among participants. Um, to be eligible to participate in the program, um, young people have to be between the ages of 12 and 17 and either uh, live um, or go to school in the promise, uh, promise zone. Um, so that's the, uh, there's, I have a picture here and it's also the zip codes listed um, that you see on the screen. Uh, and the participants either have to be um, gang involved, gang impacted in some capacity or, or maybe at risk of, of um, gang, gang involvement. Um, and, and through the three year um, lifetime of this grant, we're hoping to serve uh, 192 uh, youth participants. Um, this program was created uh, in response to the comprehensive gang model, uh, which has five core strategies to um, addressing uh, gang crime and violence. Um, of these five strategies where uh, we have three components that speak to three of them. So um, one of them being an opportunities provision, um, the second one being a social uh, intervention, and then the last one being a com uh, community mobilization uh, component. So there's three parts to, to this one program. Um, the first part, the opportunities provision, um, is run by our partner UPAC. It's a job training and employment skills course. It's an eight-week course. Um, where participants get to practice, uh, get hands-on job skills in culinary arts. Um, they get to work in the kitchen in the back at the Enterprise Center, uh, work in their print shop, learn how to um, create designs. And then also they talk about entrepreneurship, where they um, talk about what it takes to put together your own business and, and stuff like that. Uh, we'll be offering this course two times a year and hoping to reach at least 24 uh, participants through, through this component. Uh, the second part is our social intervention. Um, this is run by our partner, uh, Project Aware. Uh, this is their restorative talking circles, which I know many of you are, are already familiar with. Um, we'll, we'll be running these circles in, in an eight-week program, um, and they'll be led by Project Aware's mentors, um, all of whom are credible messengers um, and have some lived experience, um, you know, whether it be in gangs, um, or in the uh, criminal justice or juvenile justice systems. Um, and, and these circles uh, focus on primarily emotional literacy, um, developing problem solving skills, and um, also explore with the, with the young participants trauma and, and it, its impacts um, through, through these circles. Uh, and we're hoping to, to reach uh, at least 40 youth each year um, for, with this component of uh, Project Rejuvenate. And then the, the last part is the community mobilization piece. Um, this is run by us at Say San Diego. Um, this is our youth-led advocacy coalition, um, youth called Youth Unite, um, that looks to explore and, and examine the root causes of um, uh, gang crime and youth violence, as well as with uh, youth substance use disorders. 
Um, we're, we're hoping with this group to, to examine uh, alternative um, approaches to violence prevention uh, along with conflict res resolution while promoting uh, youth-led ideas and solutions to, to, these, uh, to these issues. Um, in, in addition to the advocacy component, you know, it's an opportunity for participants to, uh, to achieve personal and professional growth while they, they practice their own leadership skills, uh, advocacy skills, as well as practice uh, things like uh, civic, civ civic engagement. Um, and this, this group, uh, it, it's an ongoing, this is a little different than the two other parts, um, they're eight week, um, eight, eight week uh, sessions, but this is an ongoing course that will be going on, or an ongoing group that will be meeting throughout the year. And, and I think that's all. We just finished our first cohort for the, um, the job training and project aware. Um, components and, and we're looking to start up right Jamie probably February so uh, we'll be reaching out again to to all of you with looking for referrals um, so if, if you know any young people who are uh, eligible for this program um, you think could benefit definitely send us uh, send them our way for, for the second cohort that we have starting up um, and you have uh, my information there and, and Jamie's as well so feel free to uh, reach out at any point for, for any more information. Um, I don't know if we want to open it up to questions, if that was part of this, but we'd be happy to do that if there's time. Um, Thank you, Tyler. Yes, uh, absolutely. Um, thank you for that uh, presentation. Uh, do any uh, commissioners have any uh, questions? Uh, Pastor. Yeah, I did notice the age range was up to 17 years old. Um, is there any exceptions for Tay youth, transitional age youth? Yeah, for the um, for the first two components, we uh, just just because of the grant, it's it's we're stuck with that age range. Um, but but we do have some other programs through Elevate Youth, which is another program. Um, and, and with the advocacy coalition, we could, we could make some, some exceptions there. So, um, if you, if you have, we have other, with, for those other programs as well, you know, feel free to, to reach out and we can see if we, we can connect them to something else. Okay. And then a second part, um, on mm -hmm. the restorative circles with, uh, Project Aware, are those virtual or in person, and are they also available for schools? If we have youth that may need some of the support support services in the schools, yeah. So we, they started virtual for the first cohort, and we were able to end with them in person. Um, we'll kind of have to see how things play out right now, um, but we have the ability to to either do them in person or virtually, depending on on the situation. And then for the schools, uh, I I know Project Aware does uh, circles in schools and, and we are working with them with some of the other programs as well. So we could help connect them with schools um, to do to, to see if we could bring in um, Project to work circles there. The hope is always in person. It's always a lot more impactful in person um, when we went from Zoom to in person, but we have to be mindful that we have youth on the bus, on the trolley coming home from school. Um, it's not a neighborhood that maybe they can cross over into um, for the location. Um, and so we are open to doing Zoom and in person. If it is, if COVID permits us to do it in person, we will still have the option of Zoom for kids that the neighborhood is not friendly to. Thank you. Um, Elizabeth. Yeah, th and right. thank you, Ty. Oh, thank you, thank you, sir. Uh, and thank you, Tyler and Jamie as well. This is a great presentation and, and with many apologies if I missed it. Can you talk a little bit more about metrics and what the success look like for yeah. the participants in the program, please? Yeah, so, so for each component of the, um, of the intervention, we, we have pre and post tests. So for, for Project Aware, we're, we're looking at um, metrics that are more focused on emotional literacy, um, and and then for um, for the other component, the pre and post test is is more focused on on job skills. Um, mm -hmm. Are you, if I may, just a follow up. Are, are you yeah. in the recruitment? Are you in the recruitment process now? Is that where you are? Okay. Yeah. 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 We are for for the second cohort. Thank you. 
Uh, Dana? Commissioner Wilson and Tyler. Tyler, good to see you. Um, great, I know, right? Great presentation. Really <laughs> excited to build, have support capacity building with your outreach and very much look forward to receiving. Now, should, was there a flyer already being distributed outward facing communication? How can we as commissioners help support the recruitment for the youth? We, we have a flyer we can, um, that we can share with all of you. And, and I'd be happy to share this presentation. Um, you, you're welcome to, to share that as well. That'd be fantastic. Congratulations. Thank you. Can I revisit the last question really quick? I know we were talking about matrix, but success mm -hmm. of the program, we had the graduation. And so um, I think that's huge for the kids. They were able to graduate with their food handlers permit. They had training mm -hmm. in print press um, and culinary. Mm -hmm. And so there was a whole graduation ceremony for them, which was a huge deal for their parents and their families to be able to see them in such a light that they're never that they've never been held in in front of their parents. Um, it was just really, really touching to see the kids just really they were beaming and really proud of themselves and their families were proud and they all deserve to have that feeling. So they they finished nice. with certificates as well, certificates mm -hmm. to be um, and there's opportunities we're working on. Um, some, um, oh my gosh, help me here, Tyler. I got a little bit of cold. Um, work training, what, what are we doing? Oh, like internships. Like internships. internships. <laughs> it's an I, it's an I, come on, Jamie. Um, internships afterwards and with um, okay. UPAC, um, if everyone didn't know, they have an actual working cafe down there where they employ the youth that they train down there. So it's a pretty amazing facility. If I may, Jamie, thank you for doing a deeper dive on that, because that was yeah. one of my follow up questions that I didn't get to in terms of the internship opportunities. And thank you. Any other questions? So, uh, Tyler, uh, thank you for the presentation. Commissioner uh, Wilson, uh, thank you and congratulations. Uh, it's a uh, Great honor to uh, receive the grant, and especially for the targeted area. Um, Thank you. I, I, I would be, uh, if uh, sometimes as a um, physician, um, and my practice is right in the 92114 area that it includes, um, I get information about some of my patients, uh, children, and things like that that may be appropriate for it. Uh, if, 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 can I refer patients, uh, or not patients, but uh, potential candidates to you, or is that how it works? Yeah, most uh, most definitely. And, and I don't think, I didn't do a good, on that last slide there, there's actually a direct link to our referral form, um, and, and anybody can refer um, okay. participants through that through that direct mm -hmm. link. Um, yeah, whether it be you, Dr. Hood, or, or anybody else. Um, okay. so, so yeah, we'll be sure to share that out as well. Okay, and if the you. link isn't isn't the easiest thing to do, you can give them my cell number, my email, any referral is welcome. I'm, I want to help all of these kids. Awesome. And we did, um, at the last meeting, we did mention as far as like Commissioner Bustos, since mm -hmm. she's on the uh, communications, if you have any information that you want distributed, just flood mm -hmm. her with it. <laughs> and she's more than willing to be the contact on communications to distribute it out to everyone else. And um, because of all her connections with the county, um, it'll go well beyond <laughs> where, you know, to the four corners. <laughs> happy, happy to do the network. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, and that flyer is going to be essential so we can attach it as well. Okay, I yeah, that'd be great. Well we're happy to share that. I'm entering my email address in the chat. Yeah. I'm also doing some field work. So there are youth that don't answer the phone or they're hard to get in contact with. I've gotten referrals. Um, I'm not sure if I'm allowed to give referral sources, but um, I'll go out to where they're at and talk to them in person. Okay, thank you, appreciate that. And um, if there's no further input or questions, I'm gonna uh, move the agenda to uh, public comments. And I'm gonna ask um, uh, our executive director, uh, Astra Sandoval, if there are any um, 
anybody in the public that has uh, requested to speak? No request. Okay. And uh, just to be official, just to know at this point in time, this is a uh, public meeting and uh, we're under the Brown Act. Uh, anybody who wishes to address the uh, uh, this uh, a body can, um, uh, but uh, since we have none, um, I will uh, move to the next agenda, which is uh, Commissioner Highlights. And I don't think we have anybody to highlight um, this evening. Um, <clears throat> and we have a action item. And <clears throat> um, the action is, is that action item going to be moved by uh, uh, you, Dana? Is that? Yes. Okay, okay so I'm going to uh, defer to uh, Dana to talk about the uh, action item. I'm, I'm sorry, Commissioner Brown. It's been a while and I've, <laughs> I've gotten a little bit too uh, in, informal. So go ahead, uh, Commissioner Brown. Thank you so much, Dr. Hood. So for, let me put this in present mode. So for our youth-led recommendations, which I believe it was initially July that everyone um, first started learning about this, I uh, just wanted to briefly go through as a refresh button for commissioners that have seen it, for any new commissioners or new representative of commissioners, just to give you some background and context behind their ask. And so uh, in honoring the land that we are all on, I really want to do a land acknowledgement. Uh, we here on unceded land in there's four tribes in San Diego County, Payum, Kawichum, Capeno, Cahia, and the Kumeyaay Nation. Uh, there are 18 reservations in San Diego County, more than any other county in the United States. And we give thanks and, and honor all of those people of those tribes, past, present, and future. We honor every single one of you and your ancestors and their survivance and resilience that brought you to where you are in the world today. Um, we wanted to lift this up that it was way back in 2015, unanimous from the San Diego City Council that we have a trauma-informed approach to addressing and preventing gang violence here in the city of San Diego and our entire strategic action plan from then on has been integrating those approaches. The youth committee itself is really lifting up recommendation number one, that overarching goal. We serve youth ages 15 to 25 throughout the city because of the commissioners we have on the commission. We really are a representation of the entire county. We align with our strategic action plan and we are supported with a multi-generational model of commissioners, community mentors, um, many people that some, Tyler, you know, say San Diego is one of them. And uh, several of you here, you'll see some pictures of all the collaborative partners on the youth committee. Whoops, I'm going the wrong way. Uh, Robert Wood Johnson, this is why we're here. Uh, we are focused on equity and, and reducing uh, the impacts of systemic racism and systems-induced trauma. And you can clearly see in this very clear visual from Robert Wood Johnson Foundation of one bicycle does not fit all. The little girl in the wheelchair, it's ableism. There's only one individual in the top row. I'm gonna say that's a mom. I'm gonna presume that's mommy. In the bottom row, you can really see that every bicycle is really reflective of equity focused on behalf. That is what our youth committee is very intentional about is equity focused, healing centered and systems change. This is a picture of uh, back in uh, an annual report in 2017 when we were meeting in Southeast, uh, November of that year. And this is what all of us are about. So I wanted to show you some of our collaborative partners. 16 Strong Project is in New York. Uh, you'll see a picture of uh, one of their youth from Ohio uh, coming up in a little bit with uh, when we had had a youth panel with uh, Raul Campillo, District 7 that I represent on the commission. And we have Access Inc., which is one of our partners on the youth committee. We have Community Wraparound. You see Robert Ondevedos and Pastor Sandoval. Um, Robert has been a steadfast partner and, and Pastor Sandoval of the Youth Committee for, for years. Uh, we have Dr. Tezeru Tashome. Um, she is uh, on the Juvenile Justice Commission here in San Diego County, and she has a lot of different roles that, that she's engaged with throughout the 
uh, the city and the county of San Diego. She's one of our collaborative partners. Uh, we have Club Elevated, which Tyler had shared when he was talking about uh, what he and Jamie are doing with Say San Diego. Another picture from Club Elevated. We have Team Enough, Stefan Abrams, uh, who isn't able to be here with us this evening, but I think you all know uh, the, the exceptional young man. Maybe he's 19 now, but I think he might still be 18. I'm not sure, but mover and shaker had relocated to Washington, D.C., um, some of you are very aware of um, Youth Voice, which I had the honor and blessing of founding inside the Mid-City Police Division back in 2008 and trained all the youth leaders ages 11 to 24 on ACE of Science, which is the epidemiology, neurobiology, biology, epigenetics, and resilience building, and then helping them understand that holistically, helping them understand systems-induced trauma, helping them understand systemic racism, helping them understand white privilege, helping them understand the power of their voice and that empowerment model that they can be the ones, they, they literally, you'll see just a couple of brief pictures. She was then, uh, Jessica here was 17 years old. They presented on individuals in, oh, throughout the entire world. We had a fabulous pre-COVID um, relationship with San Diego Diplomacy Council and our youth voice leaders presented umpteen times. I think I have over 120 business cards around the world, uh, different high level leaders. Uh, this was a youth committee meeting that we started to hold virtually uh, because of the pandemic, one in, in February of uh, 21. This was a meeting that we had, uh, Raul Campillo, a gentleman right here, District 7 council member, uh, youngest council member on the city of San Diego, joined us that day immediately following when, uh, when city council adjourned and joined us to learn about what we're doing on the youth committee of our our, our Commission on Gang Prevention and Intervention. And we had an ask of him that day if we could meet with him and you'll see that, that uh, forthcoming. So this is when we met with him, um, with Raul, Council Member Raul Campillo in uh, June 24th and our youth leaders had an ask with him. And that equity focused youth panel that we held with him was this picture. And so this young lady, uh, Maya from San Diego Juvenile Justice Commission and Aparna, uh, Maya is here local in, in San Diego County. Maya, uh, I'm sorry, Aparna is a soft, was then a sophomore at a high school in Ohio. And it's just gorgeous to see, it's so uplifting and inspirational. It's one of the few blessings that came out of the pandemic is that we've all proven that virtually we can product, be productive, we can engage, we can, we can connect, we can lean in and grow and evolve. I see Tyler right there. <laughs> and, and then we continued to have our, um, our youth committees virtually. This is actually Samantha from 16 Strong Project in New York. Stephan Abrams joined us from Washington, DC. And that's our, our one from that we had from August. Uh, Dr. Teshone had had several youth from Hoover High School that joined us. We had uh, San Diego Unified School District that joined us. And so here's, so that was a very brief, quick overview of, of where we have been uh, with our youth committee over the years. This was initially going to be an ask. Stephan Abrams had had this recommendation um, in a, I think it was July of last summer. And because the, um, the city council passed the ghost gun ordinance eight to one on September 14th of 2021, this recommendation is, is no longer relevant, uh, it, which is wonderful. Well, it's not that it's not relevant, but it, it passed, so it, it would it'd be moot. And then that was uh, when they were talking about the ghost gun unit. And then Jessica Rivera was on at the commission meeting, and her suggestion was that the youth-led trauma-informed care code of conduct uh, be recommended. We know we are a, a uh, commission that makes recommendations. Uh, we're not a commission that, that, that people can adopt, uh, but rather make a recommendation. And so that was Jessica Rivera. She's a powerful um, leader from Youth Voice. And just a little bit of a backstory for anyone here that may not be familiar with the history. The San Diego Foundation funded the Clinton Foundation to come to San Diego. Why did they come? They focused on a two-year initiative, focused on reducing disparities in juvenile justice and child welfare systems, specific with African-American, um, Native American, 
in San Diego County. And so uh, when I heard that, anytime I hear advocacy systems change, resident engagement, youth voice, like how can we all collaborate together? So this is one of the pictures of that six month pro process with San Diego Foundation and Clinton Foundation. And it was youth, inner city youth from City Heights and Southeast. And they decided, they developed these youth led code of trauma informed care code of conduct. This is how the youth leaders throughout that six months said that they would like to be treated. And I'll just give everyone a moment just, just to read, um, not, not gonna read it for everyone, but individually, they really wanted to be assisted. They wanted these factors that they noted here supporting their, their healing. Their, their process of receiving uh, trauma-informed services and healing-centered appro approaches, equity-centered practices. They wanted safety. They wanted a safe and open-minded place where they felt welcome, where they felt nurtured, where they felt respected. And you can see in safety number C, they really wanted confidenti confidenti confidentiality honored unless permission is given. However, mandated reporting, they're fully aware, unless someone's harming them, they're gonna harm themselves or they're gonna harm someone else, of course, that's mandated reporting. So they're not saying an inch of anything that any of those should not be maintained, rather they did want to be respected on things that were outside of mandated reporting. The inner city youth leaders said they really wanted effective, clear, consistent, communication, they wanted transparency within organizations, they wanted to have actions explained to them. So they felt that services were being provided with them, not to them, not for them, but with them. That in and of itself is a restorative model and it's with each other, it's equity focus. They wanted supportive staff, they want kind and true and compassionate people that really are there because they value who they serve. They didn't, they didn't want someone they, that feels like, well, I'm just doing my job. It's five minutes to five. You'll have to call tomorrow. And we understand, you know, this is nuanced and it can be messy. And, and all of us here are all um, leaders on the front line of systems change. Absolutely. And so it's exciting to see what's happening here in San Diego County. We're ground zero. Dr. Vincent Folletti, the co-principal investigator of the Adverse Childhood Experience Study lives in La Jolla. That was done right here in Kaiser Permanente in La Jolla. Largest public health study, 17,337 people have gone through that health study, that ACE questionnaire in San Diego County. So we are ground zero here. So what we have in our hands and our hearts and our opportunity as commissioners is to lift up the voices of our inner city youth on these values that they would like to be respected, that mutual reciprocity of respect with them. And so we are a, um, this, these are all, this word cloud really represents so much, so many aspects of our, of our youth committee. And I wanted to share an update on what our youth committee is working on presently. San Diego Foundation, um, just because some of the work I was doing on the steering committee, et cetera, there were several, several of us that got a, a private email for a small grant. And we were awarded and we invested that small grant, 90% of it right back into the hands of the youth. We funded all kinds of youth led um, where they got stipends. If they came to a healing justice workshop, they received a $75 gift card. They were invited to a youth led quarterly uh, youth led project. When they completed that equity focused project, they received a $150 gift card. We're working with Rincon storytellers from the Rincon reservation. They're helping integrate talking circles with indigenous wisdom. We have eight youth on the youth committee representing several of our of the collaborative partners that you saw there that all received a $300 gift card for the development of a youth led train the trainer on ACEs science. Youth Voice had already done that back in 2015. We're doing a refresh button. We're including positive childhood experiences. The, stu the study that came out in 2019 from Dr. Christina Bethel at Johns Hopkins University on positive childhood experiences. And we all know this in the world we're in strengthening factors, protective factors. We all know this. Now there's research that proves it just like adverse childhood experiences, the ACE research 
proves the impact that can happen on us from, uh, from systemic racism and structural oppression, all those social determinants help. So the ACE of Science Youth-Led Train the Trainer Under Development, if any of your youth Commissioner Wilson, any of the commissioners here, if any of your youth that any of you are engaged with would like to join the youth committee, we meet virtually the third Tuesday of every month, three o'clock to five o'clock. And we would be absolutely thrilled to have the more, the more the merrier. Um, I was connected to a, an alternative high school teacher in in Glendale Springs, uh, Colorado. Um, those youth may be joining us. So because of the pandemic, because of the virtual, because of the format that we're in, this is an opportunity for all of us to lift up the voices of City Heights and Southeast youth and have that be something that we can recommend within any of our respective organizations. Um, that is our ask from the youth committee is to have a recommendation of the youth-led trauma-informed care code of conduct within your respective um, organization agency system. And may I please clarify any questions? Um, so uh, thank you for that, uh, Commissioner Brown. So, so just to be clear, what we are asked, the action item and what we're voting on, and uh, hopefully everybody got this flyer that went out, um, that uh, list the trauma-informed care code of conduct. That's the specific thing yes. that we're voting on. And then part of that is you're asking the various um, departments that are represented here that it be integrated into there. Um, you want to explain that? Just Sure, absolutely respecting and understanding process. Process is very important and I honor it 100%. And knowing that we have some of the most highest level commissioners that are on this commission representing county and, and city elected officials. And um, so I understand and respect that if, you, if, if those commissioners say, yes, we agree with, with how the city heights and, and, and Southeast youth are feeling in the development of this, this youth led code of conduct, it is a recommendation that you just take it back to your agency. It, you're not saying we're going to integrate it within our agency. We're not saying that. We don't have we don't have that kind of power, right? We're a recommendation commission. And so uh, my hope is that that once this vote, however this vote plays out this evening, my hope is that any of the commissioners here representing any of the nine district council we'll schedule a meeting. Our youth leaders would love to join you virtually in, in any of those meetings. I'd be thrilled to join you virtually if I could be in support in any way. We're taking it to your, we want to permeate out. We want the ripple effect out throughout the county of San Diego, um, grassroots to grass tops, and that's cross sector in a social ecological model. These are inner city youth sharing how they want to be valued and respected. So it's it's a it's a document from their voices that we want to lift up, and that in and of itself is the recommendation. Okay. Um, any uh, questions from the uh, commissioner? <clears throat> Pastor Sandoval. Pastor, Pastor Sandoval. Okay. Yeah. I also, I know the, the wording um, where it says trauma informed care code of conduct. Uh, we do want to just let everyone know that different departments um, have their own code of conduct already for their staff and their departments. And so this by no means is to replace that or to even amend this, this um, document into that. This is more on the practice side of, for example, if trainings are being done for like frontline staff, one of the ways that it could be implemented is that a, a, a simple slide of this, this simple slide is basically, you know, being implemented to the staff on, on how, how would it look for them to implement trauma-informed care within their practice? How would that look like? And so I know there was a, a little bit of uh, concerns that were going because of the actual language that said, uh, code of conduct. And so we, we didn't want that to intimidate 
any systems, any departments to say, no, we already have one. Um, we can't adopt something like this or vote for it because then we're going to have to revamp a whole bunch of stuff. Um, this is just as a commission, as a commission, we're backing it up and then, and then hopefully um, just disseminating it to wherever we can so that at their discretion, they can help implement this because this is what our youth are saying that, that they want. So I just wanted to add that to what Dana was saying. Pastor, if I wanted, if I could clarify too, because language is super important. This is not adopting. This is recommending. Yes. Because I think they're very different processes mm -hmm. depending on the system, the agency, the organization. So this is a recommendation. Yes. So, so just another point of clarification, and this is for really a process. And I guess, uh, I don't know if we have anybody on from the uh, mayor's office, but our, our charter really is to make recommendations back to the mayor and to the uh, city council. Um, and then um, they, they, they then uh, follow through. So um, we are recommending that this first go back to the uh, mayor's uh, office and to the uh, city council, and then uh, for them to uh, respond to it. So I think uh, how it uh, is adopted through the various uh, departments or, or used within the various departments will kind of fall in that value. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. Uh, Commissioner Bustos. And thank you. And, and thank you, Commissioner Brown um, and, 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 and Pastor Sandoval as well. It's wonderful to see this being revisited. Um, I recall like maybe two, three years ago when I first joined the County of San Diego um, that uh, my, my then colleague, uh, Dale Fleming, who's now retired and doing wonderful work in the community as well, was actually, uh, I recall she was at this table and championing this on behalf of the county. So, um, and forgive me, there, there, there's been obviously transitions and, and gaps. I would love to be able to revisit this, uh, an opportunity to revisit uh, where, you know, where the county is with this process. I recall it being discussed, um, but, but at the very least, and again, process really matters. And thank you for all the clarifications. I'm not sure I fully understand and follow the, you know, the, all the connect, the connecting dot points, but, you know, at, at, you know, assuming that we can move forward with sharing these recommendations, you know, two bodies come to mind. The first one is the, um, the County of San Diego's um, Leonel Williams Human Relations Commission. Who has a uh, who has in the last year formed a, a youth subcommittee um, that is, is just now planting some very very uh, exciting seeds um, in, in youth engagement. I think that would be an opportunity there. Um, also, um, Live Well San Diego. Um, in in you know, good news, bad news with with the COVID experience, it launched a, a youth sector. Uh, and it, it started out, you know, in the engagement of youth through the COVID lens. Now it's broader. The conversations are broader. And I'm just wondering, again, that would be an opportunity there to introduce this. But um, I, I just I need to fully understand and forgive me if I'm the only one that that misses, um, you know, the, the dot points here. Um, take it to the, to the mayor's office first. Dr. So, Hood. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, so let me explain. I'm, 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 and and that's the point I was trying to make. The uh, we we don't uh, recommend directly to the various uh, departments, or mm -hmm. um, 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 they they can do with this with what they want. But what we're doing is making a recommendation to the mayor's office and to okay. the city council. I believe what's the uh, committee on the city council that oversees us, the uh, public policy. Public safety, yeah. livable yeah. neighborhoods. Yeah. yeah. So so basically, um, let me be clear. What we're doing is the gang commission is going to take a vote to recommend to the mayor's office and the city council two things, that uh, they adopt these uh, principles, number one, and then request that the various appropriate departments consider using these principles within their department 
in a way that makes sense. I, I'm, I'm being vague because I think that's the purpose to give okay. lead way to the departments, how they um, use this. Okay. And that, and that, does that make sense? That's what we're voting on. Okay. And thank you. And Dr. Hood, just a follow up to that. When you say departments, can you, who, who do you mean? Can you be more specific? Is well, it us, the entities? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So the uh, various entities represented on the uh, gang commission. Got it. Thank you. Um, and uh, there may be other entities that are not represented on the gang commission that can also um, uh, have uh, access to this. Got it. Thank you. That's very helpful. So uh, is there any unreadiness or any other questions of the uh, commissioners? Then um, I'm going to ask a um, commissioner to motion to approve what we just discussed. Is there a motion to approve and accept this recommendation? It's Elizabeth, Commissioner Bustos. I move to approve this recommendation as Thank stated. Thank is you. There, is there a second? I just need a commissioner uh, to uh, I'll second. second. I'll second uh, Dr. Hood. Thank you, Commissioner Stephan. So it's been moved in uh, second. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> all those in favor? Raise your hand or say aye. 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 Okay. Any opposed? Any abstentions? I'll be abstaining, Chair Hood. Okay. One abstention from uh, Commissioner Genevieve Jones Wright. And uh, uh, Pastor Sandoval, I hope you uh, have who, who who voted and who didn't. As I said, I'm for some reason I'm only seeing half at a time, so I'm going back and forth. So um, it's been passed and will be referred. I am requesting if if you can just on on the chat put um, what you voted for, just so that when I backtrack and count. I don't get confused because I'm the same as you right now, as far as the screen makes it a little tricky. Okay, well, why don't I do this? I will I will um, email you <laughs> what I think we just uh, voted on. I was, uh, it's real funny, uh, Pastor Sandoval, I was gonna ask you to do the same thing for me, but anyway. <laughs> but I, I, I think basically to make it uh, uh, simple, what we voted on, uh, uh, are the code of conduct number one and number two uh, requesting that these be used by the uh, various organizations within the city uh, to be integrated or used in a way that would implement it. So I'll, 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 I'll put something in writing and email it to you as I have seen it. Or um, uh, let me ask, uh, maybe um, Commissioner Brown, Maybe I should ask you, since this is coming from you, <laughs> would, would, would it be okay if I did that or would you want to uh, clarify that? Um, Chair, Chair Dr. Hood, that's fantastic. If you'd like okay. me to help in any way with massaging or wordsmithing, okay. I'm honored, but I respect you okay. highly and very much appreciate that. Okay, all righty. All righty, well, uh, thank you for that. Uh, okay. so, Matt. Commissioner forgive Bustos. me, commit me uh, forgive me, Chair Hood. It, it's just a follow up. Uh, you let me know if this is appropriate. You know, uh, uh, assuming positive outcome, um, is it possible? I think uh, at least it would be very helpful for me uh, for this to be packaged with some kind of a cover letter, some kind of an a, a, you know a, a, an ex, an explanation, a recommendation, like what this really is, a, as a guidance document to be able to you know to assist in moving it forward. Um, then, um, I, yeah, I, I, I think that's, may I go ahead and do that? 
Well, Maybe. that's exactly what I was going to ask. I appreciate that. Okay. So uh, thank you, uh, Commissioner Bustos. I think that's a great idea. Uh, Commissioner Brown has agreed to uh, do that. So all I'm simply going to do is kind of clarify mm -hmm. the motion that I think we added it to. And then uh, our executive director, Pastor Sandoval, and Commissioner Brown will develop the um, executive summary or explanation to go along with it. Okay. I do want to, um, I'm trying to do this as fast as I can, but did uh, Michael Morrill, were you able to vote? I did. I voted yay. Okay. Okay. I just wanted to make sure. And um, Commissioner DeAndre? Yes, I was. Okay. Okay. Just wanted to make sure. Okay. okay. And then Jamie Wilson? Commissioner Jamie? Yes. Yes, I did. Okay. 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 All right. May I just share one thing, please? Yes. To all of our fellow commissioners, I'm really moved. Uh, this is something that was in the works starting way back in 2016. And the inner city youth are going to be exhilarated that you're lifting up their voices. It will mean the absolute world to them that they're being valued and respected in this way. And our youth committee on January 18th at our meeting is going to be shouting from the rooftops. Um, if any of you want to come uh, and celebrate, they, they work so hard. And, and when they have their, their youth-led train, the trainer on ACE Science complete, it will be virtual and in person. And of course, this is deeply integrated and woven through it. Um, at that point in time, you know, I, I would be really thrilled for your consideration. Um, oh, um, Commissioner Vasquez, the next youth committee meeting is, it's always the third Tuesday of every month, three to five o'clock virtually. And we'd be thrilled for you or any of your youth to, to engage. We have several collaborative partners, uh, but thank you. Thank you. This has been a really you know, beautiful long stretch uh, and, and we've arrived at the destination and um, just humbled to be able to nurture the voices of these exceptional youth forward. And so thank you to every single one of you here. Thank you. Um, Commissioner Brown, may I ask a, a question? Yes, please. Um, you know, I was proud to um, to second the motion. Uh, I, as you know, I have responsibility for the county and I just wanna make sure even though you're sending this to the city because that's where this commission is, this is, as you described, a, something that the youth worked on that they are asking for us to conduct ourselves that way. And uh, as you know, I presented this about a year ago that we started a first in the nation juvenile diversion initiative. 150 youth from around the county have been diverted into restorative community-based programs instead of coming into the juvenile justice system. Would it be okay for me to also present it to that leadership team um, as part of the process of what youth want in terms of their services, their process? I don't wanna like do something ahead of what you're doing. If you want me to wait until the city gets it and does their thing, um, that's fine too, but I, I just don't wanna you know, do anything out of order. Yeah. yeah, Commissioner Stephan, my heart says absolutely, but then my head says process. So I'm going to defer back to Dr. Hood and Pastor Sandoval, our executive director. What would be your response to Commissioner Stephan's question? So, so from my perspective, and I would uh, defer to uh, Pastor Sandoval. <laughs> however, uh, I don't, I don't see any conflict. Yeah. In in, in moving this in whatever, you know, multiple directions at the same time. Yeah, yeah, yeah I, I don't think, think yeah. yeah, in spite of us recommending it and submitting it up the chain of command, if if the county wants to run with it, you, you have every every right to do that. And so that's that's even a good thing because sometimes 
the city wants to see what the county is doing. And if the county says, oh, they're doing it. Okay, let's, we're going to do it too. And then the, they can merge on later on, yep. you know, just being on the same page. So I don't see anything wrong with it. Um, yeah. I appreciate that. Thank you. Yeah. So, and I'm, and I'm, I'm, I'm I, 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 I totally agree with that. And I have no idea how long it's going to take the uh, city to kind of respond to our recommendation, considering past uh, recommendations. So mm -hmm. I would encourage <laughs> uh, for it to go to the county to uh, incorporate that. That's that's just my two cents. Thank, thank you, Dr. Good. Thank you, Commissioner Steffens, and thank you, Pastor Sandoval. Okay. All right, thank you for all you do. So um, we're now at the uh, information scan agenda and um, uh, whoever is representing the uh, San Diego Police Department for the uh, scan, I'd appreciate uh, your presence. Yes, good evening, everyone. It's Lieutenant Mike Ramsey, San Diego PD Gang Unit. I'm gonna give you the uh, information gang uh, statistics uh, through the month of uh, November, which will also include the October statistics. And then I have a pretty accurate update also on the total uh, number of guns recovered and the increases on those compared to, to last year. But uh, first with uh, the gang investigation cases, um, for homicides between October and November, we just had one, um, but but total at that point was 17. That's um, that's an increase of eight compared to nine in 2020. And then uh, attempt homicides, we had one, uh, which is a total so far is seven, uh, which is an increase of four compared to last year this time. Um, assault with the deadly weapon cases, uh, 17 for these two months, um, which is a total of 108. Um, compared to 98 last year this time. Uh, shooting at uh, houses or vehicles, we had one for October and November combined with total 18 year to date. And uh, that's uh, one increase compared to 2020 last year at this time. Uh, robberies, we had nine for the two months, 35 total for uh, this year, and then um, a decrease on those cases between um, this time last year, which we had 48, so 13 uh, less this year. Auto thefts, we had um, 14 total, um, 61 combined year to date through November, and that's an increase of 16 compared to last year. And then all other gang related crimes, which would include vandalisms, um, assaults, um, fights, things of that nature. We had 60 between October and November, a total of 289 um through the month of um november and last year at this time we had 295 so that's down just just a tad and then um on the guns uh, recovery including ghost guns um with for the gang unit alone through through november and we're, we're finalizing the numbers for the year to date um at the end of the year and we'll have those for next meeting but um for through november we had um this is a, just for the gang unit, uh, 188 guns recovered compared to just 81 last year at this time. And 60 of those 188 were um, ghost guns, which that's up from just 16 a year to date at this time. And then um, department wide number for guns. And like I said, we'll finalize this, but this is pretty accurate through December. We're looking at um, 2,220 guns recovered um, through 2021, um, that does not include the, the gun buybacks, um, which were close to 500 guns just on gun buybacks this year. Um, so 220, two, 2,220 guns recovered this year. Um, and, and then for ghost guns, it's 546 roughly. And that's an increase of a little over 22% for 2021 compared to 2020 last year for guns recovered. I don't have the percentage of ghost guns last year. I, um, I know that that increase will be much larger when I get those numbers, but um, just when you compare the ghost gun recoveries on the gang uh, side of that, I mean, it's well over 75%. So department wide, I'm sure that figure will be around the, the same. And that's, I, that's the information I have for the statistic updates for the gang unit. Hey, thank you. Any questions? 
Um, I see uh, uh, Commissioner Wilson. Hi, how many of these cases have been adjudicated or have none of them? I, I don't have the, um, the numbers on prosecution or what's been adjudicated. I could, I can, I can try to look into that. Um, so, I mean, some of them have been adjudicated, um, and then they've been, you know, processed. Um, these are just gun recoveries. They're not always arrests related to that. Depends on the, the incident. Um, a lot of times that's, uh, we're waiting for lab process for, uh, cases to be submitted. Okay, I meant um, all of the statistics for October and November. I'm just curious how many gang enhancements or gang allegations stuck at conviction. So they would become an actual gang related statistic or have none of them. I, I don't have uh, those numbers. I'll have to get back to you on okay. exact gang convictions. Thank you. Uh -huh. Thank you. Any other questions? Yes, I have one. Okay, uh, Commissioner Brooks. Is there a way that we can start getting those statistics as well brought to us? Because I think this is a question that, is, that has come up maybe on a couple of occasions over the years, and we never get like a real answer when it comes to how many cases have actually been adjudicated. So this is like the second or third time we've had this conversation, and I just want to know if there is a way that we can start getting those numbers added to this uh, this data that's being presented to us. Or who can we yeah, go well, through in order to make that happen? I can talk with the district attorneys. I, I don't, I don't, I've never seen any statistic come back where it says this person was charged with this gang enhancement and this is, this uh, was the outcome of the case. Um, I can talk to, to the district attorney's office specifically about those statistics but I, I have not seen those. Okay, cool. That would definitely be great because uh, we're getting these numbers and when you hear numbers like this, you know, they kind of move people in different directions and they, they make you think a certain type of way. And we just want to make sure that we're 100% accurate if we're going to be putting out things like that and people are going to be taking it in. Thanks. Okay. Any other questions? Okay. Uh, uh, thank you for that uh, report, and I'm going to go to the uh, probation department update. Thank you, Dr. Brooks. Uh, so we have representatives from uh, the adult and juvenile services that will be providing some brief updates, and we'll start with uh, Supervisor Van. Uh, good morning. Uh, sorry. Good evening, everybody. <laughs> uh, so speaking on the uh, community side, we currently have 12 probation youth in the Achievement Center. We have seven non-probation youth attending. We have 14 youth attending the South Bay Choice Program and 11 youth attending the Central Choice Program and nine in the Resilience Program. Uh, probation violations and new arrests for youth were down in the last month or so, but uh, the arrests that we're seeing is most of the uh, crimes are uh, more serious than they were before. The number of youth in custody is decreasing and the youth transition center or campus is still set to open in approximately about three months, I believe, two to three months that should open up. Uh, youth also participated in the uh, in officers with the shop with the cop program in December. That was a very uh, successful event. And uh, I'm gonna go ahead and turn it over to my counterpart, uh, Maritza Rodriguez from the adult side. Good evening, everyone. Sorry about that. I had to switch locations. My dog was barking a lot. Um, for on the adult side, just wanted to give you guys all an update regarding what's going on on our end. I just had a huge turnover rate of staff who just recently got promoted um, to other positions. And I will I actually just got two new officers that are assigned within our unit that are currently monitoring the gang caseload right now. Um, right now, um, a lot of our cases have been terminated per AB 1950 regarding the gang caseload. And so many of these individuals who were previously convicted and of, a, of a certain offense, depending on the term, they were converted to two years term. So we had several cases that were terminated. Right now, our officers are averaging 
I have two right now. I have one that's averaging about 40 and I have another one that's averaging about 25 um, gang cases right now, currently throughout the central region. Um, and then I also have the transitional age youth caseload as well. And I currently have 26 cases on those in that particular case. So right now we are still providing wraparound services where we currently work closely with our ADPS, which is our alcohol drug specialist. And we also work with our clinicians, which are behavioral health team. And to ensure that the individuals that we're currently working with are receiving the appropriate services through our assessments that are being conducted on the adult side, and then getting them connected through different community organizations um, to provide their particular needs depending on what they're also recommending to us regarding their case plan. So there's a case plan that's developed with the particular probationer. Then we um, create their goals and then they also create their goals and ensure that we meet their needs. And that's where we're currently at right now for an adult, on the adult side. Uh, for probation, does that end the report? Dr. Hood, if I could just add a couple of brief uh, initiatives sure. that we are engaging in that are very much related to the conversation going on this evening. Um, I do want to just update the commission on efforts that we are um, following uh, through on regarding trauma-informed care. Uh, we're providing training to our staff on both sides, adult and juvenile, to be more educated, more aware. And I really appreciate the code of conduct that was presented this evening because it'll be something that I'll be discussing as well as something that we consider in terms of bringing on the new staff that we are uh, promoting or considering for promotion. So this discussion is very helpful to us in um, following through again on changing the mindset and uh, working towards figuring out how exactly we can do a, a more to support the clients that are referred to us. So thank you all for that. And uh, hopefully we'll have some good report out information in the future. Okay, thank you. Um, did you, I, did I see your hand, Pastor Sandoval? I was giving a thumbs up on that. Oh, okay. <laughs> thank you for that. Then uh, I'm, uh, uh, thank you, uh, probation and uh, San Diego police for your report. I'm gonna go to the committee updates. Um, the first is the Outreach Communication Standing Committee, uh, Commissioner Bustos. You're on mute. Sorry, folks. No, no material updates other than I have been looking out for your your uh, announcements, such as the one that um, was just uh, presented now by the partners of Say San Diego. Um, please send them out. But, you know, Dana, the great work that you're doing, just everybody here, everybody here, you know, don't I, I don't um, looking to you. We can talk offline, but looking to to, you know, for your, you know, what else can I do? Uh, in terms of prompting you, uh, should I, you know, every couple, once a week, every couple of weeks, you know, send, uh, have Pastor Sandoval send a prompt, you know, please send your letters, I mean, your, your announcements, um, just your guidance is to have to really make this, this process easy, because I, you know, here we are, there's such good work that's happening, you know, with, you know, with DA Stefan, uh, DA Summer, forgive me, uh, Commissioner Summers, uh, you know, with all of you, and um, it's 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 crickets. Now, having said all of that, I also have to. I mean, I'm I'm outing myself. You know, the last two years, going into three years, I have been, um, you know, my 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 work has been re redirected to COVID nineteen uh, response, and so I'm thinking if I'm been redirected, I'm certainly not the only one. Um, that's been redirected, and, and this may not necessarily and perfectly understandable be a priority. But but if it is a priority for some of you, or if the time has come, or, and you're looking for opportunities, you know now now now's the time, you know to reach out. Uh, and I see Commissioner Brown. Um, may I offer something, Commissioner Bustos? I've had for over ten years 
interns from San Diego State Child Family Development doing community community based project outcomes and Mailchimp. Mm -hmm. You can have two thousand subscribers free. Mm -hmm. Mailchimp is you know relatively user right. friendly. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and if you'd like, I could delegate. There's classes are starting up again on the 19th of January. I could delegate an intern. You know, we would want the commission to own it. So Pastor Sandoval or Dr. Hood should be the found, you know, the owner of that MailChimp. But I, I want to help you because I, I agree there's great work happening on this commission mm -hmm. and we need to shout it from the rooftops. So I think that's a low hanging fruit. Now, obviously, there's, you know, 1.3 million in the county. So but still, it could be a beginning of, of 2,000 subscribers free that could just go right. out to list serves on the commission. My goodness. I mean, I, I, I mean, we love MailChimp. We do. We do. And especially MailChimp that comes with interns. Mm -hmm. um, and so I just, you know, we could talk uh, offline, uh, Pastor Sandoval, as to how, how we can do that. Uh, especially, I think I understood Commissioner Brown that the commission would need to own the, mm -hmm. the. Okay, okay, good. But I think I mean that would be wonderful. Yes, and I saw that Commissioner Vasquez had put. We should oh, sorry. So, oh, in the chat, uh, highlight oh. different all the districts. Yes. So it's something that each you know each of us that represent one of the nine districts, we could have monthly highlights and really help build capacity. So it's not such a heavy lift for you because you have been pulled in these other directions. So it could be a win-win. Thank you. Oh my goodness. Absolutely. Yes, 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 yes. So, so I said next step, who needs to connect? What needs what would what would you recommend, Commissioner Brown? Why don't I set up a Zoom with Pastor Sandoval, you and I, and anyone Perfect. else that would like to? And we'll just get 20, 30 minutes together and think through logistics and by the next commission meeting, maybe you can share the MailChimp on share screen. Nice. Thank you. Sharing screens, I can do. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Um, is that in your report, Ms. Boos? Commissioner Boos. Okay. Thank you. Um, then I'm going to go to uh, Youth Standing Committee, uh, Commissioner Brown. Well, I have, everything was already shared before and I've been smiling ever since. So uh, thank you. Thank you to each of you here. You're welcome. Thanks for all you do. And for the gang documentation ad hoc committee, uh, Commissioner Genevieve Joan Wright. Hi everyone. Good evening and happy new year. Happy new year. Yes, I am hopeful that everyone's 2022 is going to be amazing and hopefully and prayerfully everyone's 2022 is off to an amazing start. We are looking forward to re-engaging as a committee next month. So I would like to invite any and all commissioners who are new to the commission and want to serve on the gang documentation committee to join us. You can, I got you already, Jamie. Thank you. <laughs> um, you can uh, give me a direct message in the chat or email me. And we are still working on the date. We want to make sure that it is a time that is convenient for everyone. We will, of course, do this over Zoom. There's great flexibility in how and when we will meet, um, but we have lots of things to discuss. And so again, if you would like to join us, we would love to have you. And that's my report for the evening. Okay, uh, thank you very much for that. Uh, Welcome uh, back, Genevieve, we missed you. <laughs> yeah. Welcome back. Welcome back, yeah. So um, we're at the next agenda item, which is the uh, chair's report. And I've been asked to do a COVID-19 update. Um, over the past two years, I have been uh, deeply involved with uh, county and state and uh, the uh, COVID. I'm going to be extremely brief. Um, the whole COVID thing, we thought we had our arms wrapped around us, and all of a sudden popped up uh, Omicron. Um, um, so let me start with uh, the uh, good news. First of all, uh, here in uh, San Diego County, uh, the eligible populations for vaccinations were about 3.1 million. Of that, 
uh, 88.6% or 2.8 million have received uh, at least one dose of the vaccine and uh, 2.5 have received uh, at least two doses or been fully vaccinated. Why is that important? I, I think moving forward, I, I will just speak uh, freely. I think uh, this uh, COVID vaccine is something we're going to have to learn to live with moving forward. Um, I don't really think this thing's going away anytime soon. Um, and what I mean by that is one of the ways we live with the flu and other viruses uh, that has uh, saved us was uh, vaccinations. And um, I think the, the uh, tools to uh, stay safe is vaccinations, mask, mitigation strategies, washing your hands, covering your mouth, uh, socially distancing, and lifestyle. I always talk about lifestyle because we forget that. I truly believe uh, being healthy, exercising, vitamin D, C, etc., boost your immune system, and I think we shouldn't uh, forget that. We should uh, continue to uh, uh, do that. Um, um, I will, uh, don't want to bore you with a lot of uh, statistics, but uh, one of the things I look at is within this county, I gave you the overall data, how are we doing as a community, especially in the most vulnerable and ethnic uh, communities. Um, and uh, again, the numbers show that when we compare ourselves to other places in the state of California and especially nationally, uh, we're doing uh, quite well, um, uh, better than others. But um, um, we're, we're going to have a long way to go with, with, with this uh, COVID. And I think the um, real uh, task is, uh, I call it the four pillars, lifestyle, vaccination, mask, and mitigation. Um, with this uh, Omicron, I think it's even more important with the mask. Um, than we stressed before, because this is maybe 10 times more infectious than the Delta variant. Um, evidence suggests it's uh, less uh, severe, um, but um, that may be um, kind of like a red herring. Although it's less severe, it infects more people. So in essence, if one, you're exposed to an environment where uh, with the Delta, a thousand folks got infected in that same environment with Omicron, it may be a hundred thousand that get infected. So although those that get infected are less severely ill, more are getting ill, and it's really putting a strain on the health system. And that's really the issue um, uh, uh, with the hospitalizations going up, um, et cetera. So, uh, I'll stop there and ask if there are any questions. I have a question. This is Commissioner Wilson. Um, just to just to bring this back into what this is in the gang commission, do we do outreach within sets, within um, individuals in sets that we know to bring vaccines to a set? Because a lot of times we'll have vaccination clinics that are in the public and they're in the general area of where each set is located but it's not necessarily a safe place for the sets that are within that same local Could area. Could you explain to me what you mean by sets? Gangs? This okay. is gang. gangs. Yeah okay. Um, you know I'm sorry? I was, do we do any of that outreach within sets? Gangs. Yeah. So um, I know there's been a lot of outreach. I don't know specifically to uh, sets or gangs, but specifically to the communities where they are. And they've uh, focused on um, uh, churches. They focused on uh, community uh, centers. Um, the county has uh, uh, given grants to local grassroots community organizations that have hired for the past year and a half community health workers. Um, the majority of these community health workers are usually from the communities that they're hired from. 
uh, African Americans and and uh, uh, Hispanics, you know, et cetera. And they've been doing uh, outreach uh, to their individual uh, communities. They've been empowered. Um, this initially started with testing and now vaccinations, where um, when uh, trying to get folks vaccinated was put on the internet. I can tell you an example. One of the um, when this first uh, started with uh, getting testing, it was very difficult for folks in underserved communities to get tested. Um, myself and some of my colleagues actually got one of the first testing sites, and then it turned into a vaccination site in Southeast San Diego at the Tubman Chavez uh, Center. Um, and uh, when it first started, um, the uh, rate of uh, folks showing up to get vaccinated was very low. And it's because they put it on the internet, they had to do an appointment and maybe about 50, 55% compared to other places in the county. I told the county and they responded that for our community, appointments don't always work well. We need to open it up to uh, walk in <laughs> so that they can get it any time. And um, the county, uh, uh, did that, they made it a walk-in center, and it became the most, uh, uh, it, it was the busiest testing and vaccination uh, site in the whole county, just because of that. And um, so uh, I think uh, when the vaccinations became available to the um, five years and up, there was a specific focus on the um, minority uh, underserved uh, communities where um, many of the spots to get vaccinated or the capacity to get vaccinated was actually taken off the internet. And community health workers were saying, as you identify somebody, um, we're gonna reserve 20% of the capacity for your referrals. And therefore, if you look at the data of how we have impacted the underserved our communities, We've done quite well from a health equity matrix uh, in the county. So I don't know if that's answering your question, but um, I, I, that, that's what has been done. There's been a huge health equity focus on, on, on the underserved community and ethnic population. Thank you. Okay. I, I do wanna uh, add something, Dr. Hood. Yes. Um, so we, we did a couple of events in the community um, last year, towards the end of the year, toy drives and things like that. And um, Shalin Gary, Gary, Shalin Gary, she was able to, she works with the county and she was able to get the bus, the HHS bus. Right. And uh, they were doing vaccination on site. And um, from what they told me is if, if we have any events in the community, if we shoot them an email, um, just, you know, ahead of time, they're willing to come out with their, their, right. it's a big old mobile RV and, um, you know, engage the community and, and connect them with any kind of uh, medical resources and the vaccination and that kind of stuff. Right. So, so they have been a doctor, uh, a follow who is a part of the uh, COVID equity task force that I have works with UCSD who also has a mobile unit. The county has mobile units. And they have gone directly into the uh, community, and they're still doing that at the uh, Jacobs Center, at the uh, Jackie Robinson YMCA, um, um, and there are other sites and at uh, churches specifically. And and when they do this, many times they don't put it on the internet; it's by word of mouth, so that the population we want to get there will get there. Elizabeth, I'm sorry, Commissioner Bustos. Thank you, Chair Hood. Uh, so, um, you know, just adding, and thank you, pa uh, Pastor, for, for recalling, it's actually the liberal mobile unit on wheels. And um, if, if anybody here has a, a, a discrete population, a group, okay, um, that, that you would like to create space to have, uh, to have either vaccine or testing done, again, one of those that wouldn't necessarily be open to the, you know, to the public, I mean, please reach out to me. 
and we can begin having a conversation about that because we do, uh, you know, just like Dr. Hood described, we do, you know, folks go out. I mean, there's sites throughout the county, uh, it, particularly in, in, um, in the southeastern San Diego. You know, you mentioned Jacobs. We've got the three the three uh, churches as well. Uh, but but you know, opportunities do arise to do you know priority or you know, to, just to focus on certain populations. And those are the ones that we, you know, and who can at times be very difficult to reach, yeah. you know, but I mean, if there's opportunities, this is what we're here for. Um, yeah. So please reach out. Uh, the other thing is that I just posted on, on chat, everybody, you know, for all things, for all things COVID, you know, you've got to get on, on the county site, testing, vaccines, you know, the latest public health orders. It really is a, it reads like a book. Mm-hmm. Um, to see what's going on because things you can be confusing uh, you know information dr hood you know just it, it's a lot it's overwhelming especially yeah. with the o- o- omicron the other thing that i would offer too and i know this is not necessarily but now that the i'm putting on my public health hat you know if anybody here we also do mini like half hour q a sessions with groups okay so if anybody here has again a group and everything you've ever wanted to know about COVID-19, prevention, protection, how it happened while we're here, where we're going. I mean, we're also able to do that. And we've been very, very successful in, in hosting those and folks just keep coming back. Yeah. And 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 let me stress, because there may even be folks on this call who still have questions about the vaccine, mm-hmm. safety, mm-hmm. does it work? I, I, I've, I've, I've been going through my little uh, chronic melancholy and depression. Maybe I've been dealing with this so long, but I, but I am telling you the vaccine saves lives. Mm-hmm. I, I've, I'm, I've had um, at the medical building where I am, the, uh, one of the individuals that works there uh, lost a son and lost, a, uh, lost his mother to COVID. They all lived in the same house. He never, um, I, I think he got it, but um, they were unvaccinated. He was not. The vaccines um, uh, may not prevent you from getting the infection, but it significantly reduces your risk of getting severely sick from the infection, mm-hmm. dying from the infection. Mm-hmm. Um, I've heard it all. I have family members who are not vaccinated. so. I, I I understand the concern. I understand the issues, but uh, well, let me put it to you like this: I've heard it, but it just amazes me the resistance that is uh, out there. Um, I, I I I have at least six or seven individuals who I've been talking for the past year and a half to get vaccinated. They just said, "Nope, doc, I'm I'm doing X, Y, and Z," and a couple of them called me up. They wound up with the uh, COVID, uh, fortunately did not die, but got severely ill. What they said to me was, I wish I had to listen to it. So the vaccines do work. What I'm concerned with is that we're seeing uh, 20, maybe 30% of folks who have gotten COVID and having some, we call it long haul COVID with, with uh, chronic persistent uh, symptoms of mental fog, shortness of breath, uh, little energy. Um, we don't know how long that's gonna last. Um, so it, it's not just getting COVID, it's not just hospitalizations, but we're learning that there's some long-term effects from this uh, virus that we don't know how long it's gonna last. Um, there is no evidence that the uh, vaccine causes any long-term effects right now. So. I am triple boosted. I've, I've got my flu vaccine. I've got my Moderna vaccine. They're talking about a, you know, maybe too much is too much, but I'm actually looking at a fourth dose. I, I'm mm-hmm. <laughs> okay. So I'm taking everybody else's dose who doesn't want it. <laughs> so uh, the vaccines work. They save lives, and I I get so depressed when I see folks dying who didn't have to. Uh, so don't get me preaching. <laughs> Any other questions? 
DeAndre. <laughs> I'm just laughing at you, sir. That's all. Okay, no, I I see. <laughs> I hope you're vaccinated, brother. Don't answer oh, the man. question. I, I most definitely am. Okay, definitely all right. Am. All right. But I have I a lot of family that. members as well that haven't have yeah. decided not to get vaccinated, and I do yeah. understand the reasoning behind it. So, yeah, I yeah. mean, it just it kind of goes to show you, you know, just where our system and people's faith is at, just in you know what we have going on. That's why yeah. it's very very important that we always keep it clean. Yeah, I agree. Okay. So um, that being said, uh, thanks for your uh, uh, patience with my passion sometime. And I'm going to go to the next agenda, which is uh, the executive director's uh, report. That's the sound of all. Thank you, Dr. Hood. And so one of the first things I wanted to discuss is a peace summit that I wanted to plan for the summer. Uh, poten potentially uh, the month of, of uh, May or June, um, at least a one day or um, I just have a couple of days, tentative dates, May 20th or June 10th. And uh, also for those of you that were able to participate in our 2019 Community Mentor Summit, we mm -hmm. held that at the Golden Hall. And so it was really, this was pre-COVID. And so it was uh, close to 300 folks in attendance. We did a two day um, summit, community mentor summit, and we really highlighted all the work that's going on here and not all the work, but a good chunk of work that's going on here in, in San Diego. And then we had some keynote speakers come from other cities and states to kind of see what, to share what they were doing on the program, on policy program and practice level. And so we were able to kind of pick their brain, see what we can implement here locally. And so what this peace summit, what we want to do is, is highlight um, kind of some of our efforts that what we've been doing during uh, COVID these past couple of years. Um, I know because of, of the, you know, it's still around, don't know what it's going to look like, if it's going to be in person or a hybrid model, virtually, virtual and in person, or maybe just all virtual. And so I just wanted to plant the seed so that any of our commissioners want to be involved on the planning team on that or a representative. Um, let me know, put, you can email me directly. Uh, Commissioner Brown, a couple of other folks from San Diego State University are gonna be part of this. A couple of our community mentors to help organize this. And so I just wanted to plant the seed tonight on that. Um, the other thing I wanted to announce is uh, we have uh, a few of our community mentors, former gang members that are community mentors slash credible messengers that have put a two hour um, gang educational uh, presentation to highlight the work, to talk about their transition of how they went through the stages of change in their life um, from, you know, from, and, and the presentation is called planting seeds for youth's future needs. And so the audience can be elementary school, middle school, or high school. It can also be for any of your staff, any departments, if you if you would like this training. We have uh, Robert Ontiveros, I believe he's still online, um, that, that is one of our mentors to do this. We have uh, Bishop Bowser, we have um, Rudy Arias, we have several folks in the community that um, are part of this and we're willing to present at different locations. So if, if you're looking for something like that, don't hesitate to call me or send me an email. Um, there is a cost attached to it though, because <laughs> uh, a lot of our mentors are in between jobs. And so we're asking for a $600 stipend um, so that they can actually get a, you know, a little love offering, if you will, a little stipend or uh, so that they can get paid for it. Um, if, if you absolutely don't have it in your budget, um, we'll still come out and do it. But if you do have some, something in your budget and you would like to contribute, the money goes directly to our mentors. They eat, three of them will get a, a budget, a, a stipend. And then the, what's left over of that, it actually funds mm -hmm. our peace meal, our community mentor dinner night that we have every Monday night. And so it, goes, it gets recycled back into the community. Um, for our no shots fired, uh, 
we have an, an upcoming training. Let me ask a uh, question, uh, 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 Commissioner Wilson. Did you have a question? Yeah, but I didn't mean to interrupt. I, I figured you could have my hand till the end. Okay. Do you want me to wait? Okay. 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 Wait. Okay. So for No Shots Fired uh, program, uh, we have a training, an upcoming training, January 11th and 12th. It's going to be at the Jacob Center from 4 p.m. to 9 p.m. And this is a training uh, that's going to be facilitated through Dr. Akil Bashir. He does a lot of trainings all over. Um, he's an expert and he trains uh, system partners, community mentors, credible messengers. Um, and this specific training is going to deal with the outreach part of it. And so if any of our commissioners, if you guys want to come in and kind of do a little meet and greet so that you can actually see who our uh, peacemakers are going to be out in the community when it comes to outreach, violence, interruption, um, helping to de-escalate, you can meet them in person. Um, maybe, you know, give you a couple, a few minutes to maybe introduce yourself and, and your role in the community or your role in the commission. And so this is gonna be happening January 11th and 12th from 4 p.m. to 9 p.m. at the Jacob Center. And um, looking forward to that. So if any of you guys wanna come out and participate, be involved and just kind of uh, observe, uh, you're uh, welcome to, to be part of that as well. That being said, our last but not least, our community wraparound gang prevention intervention meetings are still being held every Monday from 6 to 7.30 p.m. at the Remnant Church cafeteria. And we have a lot of the work that we do with, with the youth subcommittee or the commission or the different programs. They come out and present every Monday. They can get referrals or referral, refer youth or adults or families to the community as well. And it's it's really a hub of, of networking and connecting within the community. And so we got we got guys in there literally from almost every gang in San Diego, OGs, some are uh, former gang members, some are active, some are on the fence, some are in that contemplation or pre-contemplation stage of change, but it's a healthy atmosphere where they can come actually come and see what's being done and see a lot of guys that are uh, changing their life around. And so um, that's still taking place every Monday. Uh, we were doing them virtual and then we started, we transitioned to outdoor in the church patio and now we're back in the, in the cafeteria. And so if you're uh, vaccinated, no symptoms, you have your mask and everything, you're free and welcome to come out to be part of that as well. Um, as far as our cast meetings, uh, we're still meeting with uh, uh, Pastor Archie Robinson, the casting, Pastor Patty B, every the second Thursday of every month. And so I know some commissioners on here attend that. It's from eight to nine in the morning, the second Thursday of every month. And police department's part of that, uh, probation, anyone that wants to come in and report on a week, on a monthly basis, what's going on. And we also help identify hot spots in the community so that we can go do the walk and knocks and direct outreach and uh, victim assistance support. And so that's ongoing, ongoing. Whenever you, see, you hear about a shooting in the community, a stabbing, anything like that, the mobile response team is, is, is uh, they're, they're on the front lines and uh, reaching out to either the, the victims, the community, and in some cases, even the, the perpetrator and their families. And so I um, wanted to make sure to keep you guys informed and updated on that. And that's all I got, Dr. Hood. If any questions, right now is a good time. I see two. I see uh, Commissioner Wilson and Commissioner Brooks. Okay. Um, okay, so I, I have three things. Just feedback on the dates. June 10th was the date that you're contemplating for the peace um, making event. I just yes. wanted to let you know that June 10th, June, June 11th is going to be graduation days for a lot of the kids in the city this year. So that might not, we might not get a lot of youth involved at that for that, for that date, um, right around there. Um, and then a question is, is there any way you can email out a formal kind of an informational brochure of some sort about the $600 um, for the mentors that that training 
because I'm envisioning, you know, I like, always like to connect things like that. We want to put money back into mm -hmm. pockets of people who are coming back into society, giving back and help them get on their feet and stuff. And because of my, the program, I'm, I'm trying to figure out a way in my head right now where we can make those connect. Um, and then you mentioned a mobile response team. Do they have to be called? Who is that? Yeah, so typically we get we will get a text message from either the community, the community, a community member, or uh, just because a lot of the people out there they kind of know who we are already. Um, so we'll get a text message from the community that something happened, and or uh, law enforcement as well. So depending who's on the beat, and if they know us, they already know who we are. We'll get we'll get a text message so that we can help respond to that, whether it be at the scene the the family's home or even the hospital okay and so I, yeah, can i get can can we can you share that in an email i've specifically asked in recent shooting scenes murder scenes who they were calling in for trauma for the youth who were being detained who had just watched their friend die and nobody mm -hmm. came nobody was called and that's a concern of mine because we're leaving these kids um nobody thinks of the friends when we're thinking about victims, we think of the families, we think of the moms, um, the kid, the children of, but we're not thinking about the friends who are left behind and no one's paying attention to them or addressing their trauma. Right. Um, and they are just kids. I mean, people I can call them gang members all day long, but they're kids. Yeah. As so a matter of fact, if you know any, spe any specific youth or families and you got their contact information, um, we can, as early as tomorrow, we can, we can dispatch some teams to be part of that. And you'll share that number. Yeah, and, and so as a matter of fact, is one of our partners, uh, UPAC is one of our partners and um, on the mobile response side. And so Bev, Bev's team and she's dual role, she does Mothers with the Message and the UPAC mobile response through um, UPAC. She does that with UPAC, so. But yeah, anything you got, we got mentors um, that are ready to respond. And then I believe they also have a clinical, um, a clinical counselor on the clinical side, uh, grief support. Celeste Hunter, she does grief support on that as well for the parents. Okay, so, thank you. Yep. Yes, I was just curious to know where we were with this commission being funded. I know we all do like a lot of great work mm. and we all have nice networks that we work with and we get things done, but it's been about going on, I don't know how many years now that we keep having the same conversation. I think if we had like a budget where we all could do something together as a group and really say like, this is the gang commission and not necessarily piggyback off the work that we do with other individuals. I mean, it's all still working, but for us to really be like a, a team and, and do something under one umbrella, that would be great. And like, you know, this is a conversation. I hate to keep beating a dead horse, but we've been having this conversation forever. And, and you know, you guys have spoken to the powers that be <laughs> and said that, you know, we were gonna be making something happen, but I just wanna know what we could do as a unit and, and when that funding will be coming in. Can somebody speak to that for me, please? Yeah, so, uh... Commissioner Brooks, I really appreciate you being on this uh, commission because that's why you're here. Mm -hmm. I can let those things drop. I appreciate that. Yeah, I, um, to be honest, that was really one of my uh, our concerns and hot items uh, over a year ago. Um, and uh, to be honest, previous administration wasn't very responsive um, uh, to that in the conversations that I've had now have a new administration and uh, I have uh, neglected to really push it at that level as I did before. And uh, because of your insistence and reminding, I'm gonna to get together with uh, Pastor uh, Sandoval and um, uh, uh, at the next meeting, come back to you and um, maybe have some information about what the response is. So I appreciate your uh, bringing that up. And for the new commissioners who- Dr. Hood, if I may real quick, if I can interject one more time. Yes, sir. With all, with all due respect, this was a conversation that we just had at uh, a previous um, 
meeting, not the last one, but the one before. And you had let us know that, you know, that there was a new, uh, that basically there was a changing of the guards and that people were more willing to talk and that you would come back and you would let us know something as well. So this was like, you know, just a couple of meetings ago. And so I was yeah. kind of hoping to be able to get something tonight or like right now or make sure that that's at the top of the agenda. So next time we meet, we can actually like do something as a unit in a group. Because like I said, it's a lot of great work going on, but I think I've been on here for about four or five years and we've never been able to do anything as a unit with funding. And so it's kind of hard to do prevention and intervention work as a commission on gang prevention and intervention. And we have to have this conversation with each other and not the individuals that can change things. So maybe when you have that meeting with whoever you need to talk to, you can actually get them to come to one of our commission meetings. And then we can kind of direct our questions toward them, whoever the powers that be are. I think that would be a little bit more better and it'll kind of stop the back and forth. You know, I know you're doing your part as much as you can, but maybe we can see them at our next commission meeting and I can speak to them. Yeah, so uh, Commissioner Brooks, let me be clear. I absolutely dropped the ball. Um, and, and that's what I uh, said, I appreciate you being here. I have not had that uh, conversation that I said I would with the new administration, uh, but uh, uh, hopefully at the uh, next meeting, we'll have some information. I can't promise you how they're gonna respond because I don't know how they're gonna respond. But uh, I, I will, um, I think your suggestion of trying to get somebody to, uh, other than me and uh, Pastor Sandoval sitting here representing them, to actually get somebody from the mayor's office or from the city council uh, to uh, be able to answer these questions is a very good suggestion. And I will make that suggestion. Well, will we be able to ever coordinate anything worst case scenario? Because I mean, worst case scenario, they just, you know, it falls upon deaf ears. And like I said, this is a conversation we've been having for about maybe four years now. We've been having it at all of our um, um, annual or yearly get togethers or retreats and it has not been coming together. So the conversation is kind of, it's been over redundant already. And I just like, I wanna know whatever we could do as a commission, as a unit to really just like get an answer because other than that, it's gonna continue to just be this. And, you know, I know it's not you. I know you're not a part of that, you know what I mean? Uh, power structure to the point to where you can make that decision, but you have access to be able to talk to them. And, you know, we want answers. The community wants answers. This commission does a lot of great work, like I said, and we really want the real community buy-in. We need to be able to do something that's tangible and not necessarily just the work of other groups and other networks. I hear you. Thank you. Welcome, sir. Uh, Commissioner Brown. I just wanted to follow up on behalf of Commissioner Wilson's request. Please know Robert Ontiveros put in the chat box an infographic on that gang panel. So all the commissioners, if you open up your chat box, thank you, Robert, for doing that. Okay. Thank you. Um, Ms. Gross. Um, hi, I, I just had a quick announcement. Um, Supervisor Lawson Remmer is hosting a um, alternatives to incarceration um, community forum on February 2nd um, and would like to get the word out to folks. So I can drop the registration link um, in the chat, but really looking at um, what we've learned in terms of during the pandemic when we were able to um, release quite a few folks from our local jails and um, how we can use that to kind of dispel some of the myths and um, look at where, um, what kind of data we need to um, address some of the racial inequalities that we know exists within our criminal justice system. So uh, big topics, um, but wanted to make sure folks knew about that. It's on February 2nd at 6 p.m. So I can drop the registration link in the chat if anybody's interested in attending. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Uh, Commissioner Bustos. Thank you, uh, Chair Hood. This is like, uh, uh, directing this to, to Pastor Sandoval. Uh, right before the holiday, it is a housekeeping issue, uh, you know, related to COVID. Right before the, um, the, the holiday break, I recall receiving an email from the mayor's office uh, requesting uh, 
verification of vaccines as a requirement for serving, obviously throughout the city, but also that it applied um, to commissions. And that's a thing. Yes. Yes, it's it's there. It's real, and so. Um, mm -hmm. It's it's a thing for all the for all employees in the city, but also those that serve on the commissions are kind of viewed as, you know, mm -hmm. employees because they're integrated within the city as a commissioner. And so, yeah, it's a real thing. And so if you did receive that email, um, once you fill out that form, it goes into the like the HR department on the city side and they kind of pick up on that. And then as time goes on. My, uh, the direct office of boards and, and commissions, uh, Matthew Gordon, he'll get, mm -hmm. he'll have like next steps on those that did and those that didn't and what the next steps would be with that. Mm -hmm. and, and thank you for that. Uh, I do believe, I did believe that it was a thing and, but I also knew that I missed the deadline. So as somebody who walks around with a scanned, uh, vaccination card, I did go ahead and, um, and enter my information, but it was, this is just a more of a, you know, information for my fellow commissioners to just be on the lookout for that. And if it is a compliance, it, if it's a compliance issue uh, in a condition of remaining on this, uh, at this important table to, to please consider it. Yeah. Please consider it. Okay. Mm -hmm. Commissioner Brooks. Follow up, if I can follow up real quick. I didn't get that email, but uh, I'll be more than, uh, happy to go ahead and provide my vaccination um, documentation. But I was just thinking about how something like that can easily be brought to our commission and we can fall mm -hmm. in line. But when it comes to actual getting funding to do different things for our commission, it's, everything is out of whack. So that's just crazy to me how that can come and happen and we can have that type of conversation, but we don't have any type of funding to do anything. And we take the work of everybody else and kind of capture it as our own even though we're all together, you know, networking on the same team. And we've been having this conversation for like four years. So it's just like, you know, when you start looking at all the red tape and the bureaucracy, it's just, you know, it's starting to just, wow. But thanks for that info. Just a prime example of, you know, how things work, I guess. Yeah. There, just to put a plug in on the No Shots Fire program, um, that is some funding that came down through the city, uh, the police department and the fiscal agent at South Bay Community Services. But uh, Bishop Cornelius Bowser is uh, directing that program and he is creating, there's already community mentors, incredible messengers that are gonna be part of that, the outreach team and some teams that are gonna go into the schools. But from what he was telling me is that there also, um, there may be some slots there that uh, mm -hmm. he's creating a roster because even though th there might already be certain specific positions allocated to certain people, um, they might have other jobs and it's full-time, part-time, but there is, there is opportunity there. And so if, if uh, we can have a offline conversation about that, if you know mm -hmm. anybody that wants to get involved in that, but I know as far as what you're mm -hmm. saying, long-term sustainability, um, we would love to have something like uh, mm -hmm. Oakland does, they have like an eight million dollar budget for their city, for their for their prevention program. Half of that goes in, into mm -hmm. community programs. The other of it, the other half of that is for like on for staff mm -hmm. onboarding their their well, staff. Well, what I was saying, Pastor, not necessarily yeah. that there isn't funding in different programs that are already out here doing the work. I'm talking about specifically for the commission as mm -hmm. commissioners and as a group and as a unit. There are a hundred different organizations and a hundred different funding streams that are out here when it comes to work, but I'm talking about something that we can actually capture as our own and work on as our own. We all have our partners and we all have our networks and that's yet to be seen just yet. So I don't want you to get it misconstrued as far as me thinking that there aren't things going on or there isn't funding or opportunities out there. I'm talking about as a group and as a unit, as a collective. And we haven't had that since I've been on here and we keep talking about it, but we also just capture the work of other organizations, other individuals and other partners. I just want to be able to do something that we can actually say is ours in general as a collective. Does that kind of clarify what I was saying a little bit better for you? Because I don't know where the no shots fired came from. I mean, I know they're doing their thing and all that type of stuff, but I don't think they represent the commission. They're just a network and 
individuals that we know and work with. Okay, so um, I'm going to go to uh, Commissioner Brown, and I'm going to make her as the last uh, comment because we're at our time. And after her comment, I'm going to move for adjournment. Um, Pastor Sandoval, would you please resend the link that we upload our, I just got my booster, you know, I, I can't find that link. Can you please resend that to all the commissioners? Thank yeah, you. And I'd, I'd like to make a motion to adjourn our meeting. Is there a second? Second. Okay. All in favor, say aye. 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 Thank you, everybody. Have a great aye. evening and uh, stay safe. Much love and light to each of you. Good evening, everybody. Thank you, guys. Have a great night. Nice seeing everyone. Be safe, everybody. Yeah. Bye.